Get off my fucking TV and save me the misery. And all you fucking goons, just grab a cold beer. The man of the hour is finally here. J.D. from New York, 206. It's time for off the script. J.D. from New York, 206. It's time for off the What is going on, guys? JD from New York here. Um, it's episode 125, part number two of the number one fucking podcast in your subscription boxes. Right here on YouTube.com for everything WWE. This is Off The Script. Hope you guys are having a great Saturday. Thank you for joining me right here on Off The Script, man. Unbelievable part one. If you guys missed it, link will be down in the description below. Make sure you guys go check that out. I failed to mention that I did a TNA review as well for the final deletion. If you guys want to go check that out, my Monday Night Raw review. Earlier this week, go check that out. I did a nice video on the T. Martin uh, CSGO lottery scandal. If you guys want to go check that out. Everything you need is linked down below in the description of this very video. And I'll put annotations on the video screen for you guys for easy access as well. But off the script, guys. Thank you so much. Episode 125 for your UFC 200 Saturday. Unbelievable. I don't know where I'm going to be. We're still trying to figure out what we want to do. All I know is I will have a cold beverage in my hand and my cell phone with me and you guys will be seeing tweets all night long so make sure you guys are following me on twitter at jd from ny206 subscribe to the youtube channel if you have not done so already same thing jd from ny206 wrestlecrate.com use the coupon code jd sent me for an instant 10 percent off your first purchase wrestlecrate.com and on twitter at wrestlecrate's the number one pro wrestling based subscription service delivered to your front door Pro Wrestling Tees and Barber Shop Window. My own online shop, the official partner now of Barber Shop Window. Link is down below in the description if you guys want to go get your own merchandise for this very podcast. Great way to support the show. And the Roman Reigns Get Off My TV t shirt is the number one seller on Barber Shop Window right now. So make sure you guys go get your off the script merchandise today. Barber Shop Window. Link is down below in the description. And as always, Patreon.com. If you guys want to support and pledge on a monthly basis towards this very podcast. Bunch of great shit that comes along with being a Patreon, man. Go read the mission statement. It is there for you guys to check out. Never an obligation. Always do it out of the kindness of your heart if you appreciate what I'm doing right here on this channel. It's Patreon.com slash JD from NY206. And finally, guys, the iTunes podcast is live. I, that, I uploaded that motherfucker on Monday, I believe. And it's live. iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher Radio, Audio Boom, and Google Play. Make sure you guys go check that out with a new episode coming, I hope, on Sunday when I get back from Atlantic City. New episode going up on Sunday, so you, know, you don't want to miss that. We'll talk about what we did in Jersey and my, my trip down there for the, for the next three days. Going to be fucking awesome, man. Do not miss those iTunes podcasts, man. It's a different vibe than what I do here on Off The Script. And it's a little bit more laid back, a little bit more casual. And it's just me talking to you guys and just being me, man. It's, it's Jerry. It's not JD. You know, obviously you get the glimpses of what we do here on Off The Script as well with the an animated... Uh, Animated commentary and you know the vocal opinion about what's uh, shitty in WWE, but it is there for you guys to listen, man. We are on episode 19. Hopefully episode 20, like I said, will be uploaded on Sunday when I get back from New Jersey. Thank you guys for that. Now, as far as wrestling news goes, man, I, I, am, I am in New Jersey, and I, I still don't see anything about a breaking story. It, it's been a very, very quiet week, and I expect it to be. Um, so we're going to run through some... 
some stories here that really aren't as big. There's one big, there's actually a couple of decent news stories uh, about Brock Lesnar's SummerSlam opponent. Why didn't WWE announce it at the live SmackDown tapings when they taped them on Tuesday? You had to physically watch the show on Thursday to find out who he is fighting at SummerSlam. And we all know that is Randy Orton because it was leaked up in Canada on an early showing of SmackDown. I got news on Mark Henry. I got news on Apollo Crews. I got news on Roman Reigns, which will be the top story, which we'll talk about in a second. But a lot of... Decent stories that really aren't going to make headlines anywhere. I got news on Hideo Itami and what they plan to do with him down in NXT, and I'll give you my opinion on that. But uh, without further ado, guys, let's get into the news story here. We are going to talk about Roman Reigns, as always, uh, turning heel at Battleground. Now, to the surprise of no one, the rumor has finally come to light that Roman Reigns will finally be turning heel once again. He returns uh, from his suspension to the WWE. At Battleground, he'll be part of the triple threat match between the current WWE Champion Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins. The expectation is that he'll be booed out of the building. This should not be an expectation. It needs to be... I don't know what other word I could use besides expectation, but it's coming. It is coming. Like the fucking sun is going to rise in the morning and is going to set in the evening. You know it's coming. There's no doubt in my mind. WWE should already be preparing for what is going to be Roman Reigns' end of days. And I don't mean to mock Brother Nero. It is Roman Reigns' end of days at Battleground. Because as soon as he walks into that arena and his music hits in Washington, D.C., it is going to be a fucking bloodbath. I will tell you that. He will be booed out of the building like never before. There is going to be an overwhelming negativity on Reigns when he returns. However, the rumor going into the news... Uh, this week is that Vince McMahon is planning a redemption storyline. This is still being talked about, and we talked about this on Off the Script last weekend. And Vince McMahon is really set on having Roman Reigns be apologetic and slowly earn his way back into the good graces of the WWE Universe. That is a battle that WWE, Vince McMahon, and Roman Reigns will never win. Never. So, as of that, there's another rumor claiming that WWE may just accept his position and turn him heel. According to a report from several sources, a heel turn is very possible at Battleground, but it will most likely involve him not winning the WWE Championship because he's still in the doghouse after his suspension, and rightfully so. The Shield three-way triple threat has had many fantasy bookers imagining every possible outcome for when Battleground rolls around. Ambrose's character seems poised to remain exactly how he is now, champion or otherwise. But with a vocal backlash Roman Reigns has been facing on a nightly basis, and the reception that Seth Rollins was met upon his return to the company, which was overwhelming, and WWE should have known that, the triple threat match seems like a perfect opportunity to execute a double turn again, regardless of the outcome. However, according to Cage Side Seats, the likelihood of that happening is not very high. Whether Reigns comes back from suspension equipped with a redemption storyline or he maintains the polarizing tweener role that he's been having on WWE television. But at the moment, WWE and Vince McMahon has no plans, according to cage side seats, to turn him heel. And it appears that no drastic change is on the horizon for Seth Rollins either. Rollins has been rebuilt with some redesigned merchandise but he has yet to reclaim what he truly never lost, the WWE Championship. And while he still might, it apparently won't come as the top babyface the fans have largely hoped for. Just as Vince believes Reigns will eventually get over, guy's fucking sick in the head, Vince believes Reigns will eventually get over. Yeah. And I'm eventually gonna fucking walk on into Megan Fox as I walk to my car and she's going to be fucking overwhelmed with joy. Oh, J.D., you look so handsome today, man. Right? And I hope Megan Fox doesn't sound like that. But she's going to be so enamored with J.D., and she's going to want to take me out, and she's going to want to fucking wine and dine me and have her, co have her come back to my place. She's going to willingly come back to my place, and she's going to give me the best fucking blowjob I've ever had in my entire life. I believe that's going to happen. It's actually more likely to happen than Roman Reigns turning 
and turning into this redemption, this redeeming character. That is more likely to happen than having the fans accept Roman Reigns. It is never going to happen. Never. Why Vince McMahon believes he will eventually get over proves to me that Vince McMahon is suffering from dementia because he must have forgotten what happened with the Royal Rumble. He must have forgotten what happened with Monday Night Raw in Philadelphia. He must have forgotten what happened with the Survivor Series. He must have forgotten what happened when Roman Reigns rolled on into fucking AT&T Stadium in front of 100,000 fucking people at WrestleMania and won the title and nobody gave a flying fuck. Yeah, Roman Reigns is going to get over. Now that people have a reason to fucking dislike him even more, knowing that he is the face of the company, knowing he was the WWE champion because he was the chosen one, and now that the rumors got out and everybody has access to fucking all these stories, they're going to they're gonna pretty much pick it apart and think what they want, and they're going to go to the arena, knowing Reigns is the chosen one, is not going to be punished completely, and they're going to boo the fucking shit out of him. They are going to fucking spew so much hate that this guy is going to go right back to where he was and puff the magic dragon and he's going to calm his fucking nerves because he can't fucking take it anymore. Turn the fucking guy heel. Give him something to work with. Take all this negativity that you are definitely going to get and use it as ammunition for Roman Reigns' growth. What is so difficult about that? Vince McMahon believes... Vince McMahon believes it will happen. I believe if Vince McMahon goes through with this storyline, Roman Reigns will never recover and never have the WWE career. We know that he could have. This will take ages to come back from. He already has fucking marks on his, on his resume due to what WWE and creative has given him. He's got a negative mark all across the board because of how he is looked upon in WWE. Add that with the drug violation and the suspension. This guy ain't looking too good. The way you take all this negativity is you have him come back and you take all this expected hate and you use it as fucking fuel. Fuel Roman Reigns' growth. Fuel his character. Turn him into the fucking cocky motherfucker. It's very easy to turn around. It's very easy to do. Roman Reigns doesn't have to come out with the vest. He doesn't have to come out with the theme. He doesn't have to come out pumping his fist. Superman 2.0. He doesn't have to do none of that. What Roman Reigns can do is come back from suspension and wear a nice Armani suit. Wear a nice watch. Slick back hair. Sunglasses. He can come out and be a prick and he can play off the fact that he is Roman Reigns and that he does have the status in the company that he does have and he knows he can get away with murder because he is the chosen one. You play off that on television and you make him into the biggest prick the WWE has ever seen. You thought Batista did well with the fucking Hollywood Batista role. That was the best thing in Batista's run. In his entire career, Batista never looked better than what he did before he left the company. He was amazing at being a prick. The Rock, Hollywood Rock, is such an underrated rock role. In fact, it's my favorite rock. The corporate rock, the fucking goody two-shoes rock that played up to the fucking people, the people's champion. But, and then, then you had Hollywood Rock. Rock was a dick. He was a fucking prick. And that's what made him enjoyable. That's what people liked about him. I enjoyed it. I enjoy watching pricks just fucking be cocky and play a heel. That's what Roman Reigns needs to do. It's not that different from what The Rock has gone through. If you use The Rock's blueprint and you apply that to Roman Reigns, you could have a potential winner. Instead of believing in some fantasy that he's going to eventually get over. He's never going to get over. Why would you want that for him? As a CEO, you want what's best for your talent. You want to use your talent to the fucking... You want to use, the, you want to use your talent to the best of their ability. You know? Roman Reigns has qualities in him that need to be seen. 
you're hiding all those qualities by having him go out there and try and redeem himself and try and get on the fan side. Fuck the fans. Rollins doesn't need to be the one saying fuck the fans. Rollins was expected to be a babyface when he came back, and WWE reverted back to having Rollins as a heel. Roman is the one who needs to say fuck the fans. Because they've given him the most grief out of anybody. People know and associate Rollins with the, w with the WWE Championship and him having it taken away from him unfairly without losing it. That's someone people want to cheer. Roman is someone people want to hate. So why don't you play off that and turn it into a good thing? I don't get it. But Vince McMahon is making me a believer in the fact that he has dementia. He will eventually get over. And Vince McMahon's mindset about Rollins is that he will become one of the greatest heels in the history of the business. Rollins was certainly given every opportunity in 2015 to put the company on his back and showcase his abilities to be the WWE's lead heel. Whether or not his run was successful is up for debate. The timing of his injury was certainly unfortunate, although preliminary creative plans called for him to drop the title to Reigns at Survivor Series anyway, and eventually feud with Triple H, which would have culminated at WrestleMania. WWE squandered a perfect opportunity to bring Rollins back as a huge babyface. Fans were not behind Roman Reigns as champion and desperately wanted to cheer for Rollins. But due to a lack of top heels in the company, Vince brought him back as a heel and doesn't appear to be second-guessing the move now. So, that doesn't make any sense. At all. If you flip the roles, he would have still had a top heel. But not in Rollins. In Roman Reigns. So, that I do not buy at all. But with reports surfacing recently that Vince is still interested in an angle between the Shield and the club, which we'll talk about in a second, he may have to reverse some course at some point in the not-too-distant future. Now, as far as the club versus the Shield, this is still being talked about. Some time ago, there was a rumor that WWE was planning a feud between the club and the Shield, which I brilliantly laid out for you guys with the arrival of AJ Styles. Obviously, that did not happen. And I even did it again with the inclusion of Finn Balor. Again, it did not happen. The rumor was before that WWE and before the draft that it was understandable that some plans would have to be postponed or even scrapped. This is all due to the draft and the brand split. According to a report from DWN, DailyWrestlingNews.com. Top, top WWE officials and Vince McMahon are still interested in making a feud between the club and the Shield work for WWE programming. However, Vince McMahon wants the club to be stronger than they are now, which will include better booking and possibly adding more members. Samoa Joe, Shinsuke Nakamura has even been rumored. But Finn Balor is much more likely to join the club. Due to Vince's logic, the idea for the feud has been put on the shelf until the right time. Obviously, Dean Ambrose, Seth Rollins, and Roman Reigns are in the middle of something, but a S.H.I.E.L.D. reunion is expected sooner rather than later. It'll just be several more months before it actually happens. By the time the club is strong enough and the S.H.I.E.L.D. has been reunited, it'll be interesting to see how that will work with the brand extension because it could be seen as Raw versus SmackDown as well. WWE could certainly make this work, okay? I fully expect... The club to be all on SmackDown. I expect Finn Balor to be on SmackDown because I think it's going to be the wrestling-heavy show. I think Rollins, Reigns, and Ambrose are going to all be on Raw. If WWE wanted to just let the brands be separate for months and you really want to play into this brand split, the idea of the club, after they're done with whatever they got to tie up on SmackDown, whoever they're feuding with, John Cena, it could be anybody, the club could infiltrate Monday Night Raw. And out of nowhere, nobody knows. Nobody knows it's going to happen. And we're all stuck on the mentality that WWE is really keeping the brand separate. The club could show up on Monday Night Raw. They can invade Monday Night Raw. This would be a great fucking angle for WWE to play and work with if they want to make this work. The club could infiltrate another brand. If you're going to really going to make if you're really going to make these brands separate entities, you got to give it an NWO-type feel. It could still have that NWO-type mentality. 
taking over a specific brand, taking over the company, you know? Yeah, they're SmackDown, but now they're on Raw, and they're taking over Raw. They're going to make a name for themselves at the Shield's expense. It could still work. It could certainly still work. Now, how you get the Shield back together, if you really want to push Rollins as a babyface and Roman as a heel and really play up to their strengths, I don't know how that's going to work and how you're going to reform them, but as far as the club and the Shield, it could certainly work. It could really work. And it's going to take some thought process, but it's not out of the realm of possibility. So it is still being talked about. Vince McMahon is putting it on the back burner right now because they got a lot going on, I am sure, with the WWE draft and the brand split, and they need to have the guys they want on the right shows, and they need to come up with plans to make this thing work. This is the most important thing. After you laid the groundwork for everything for this draft to work, then you can start worrying about how you want to handle each individual roster. So one thing at a time, but the club versus the shield is still being talked about. As far as Seth Rollins goes... Vince McMahon is set, and this is, this is in the rumors on several different sources. Vince McMahon is set on keeping Seth Rollins as a heel, okay? Now, he's come back from injury. He hit the reset button. Absence makes the heart grow fonder, and the WWE Universe usually turns the star face, as they tried to do with Seth Rollins recently. Instead, Rollins returned and claimed that the opinion of the fans is meaningless to him, and he just picked up as a heel right where he left off back in November. There was some backlash about the decision because WWE and the WWE Universe thought that Rollins would lose to Roman Reigns at Money in the Bank. However, Vince McMahon is said to be the reason behind that decision because he believes that Seth Rollins could be one of the biggest heels in the company. According to CageSideSeats.com, during his original heel run as, as WWE Champion, Rollins would get consistent help from the authority and others to keep him as the champion. After defeating Reigns clean, he'll be able to be believably on his own it's very unlikely that Roman Reigns will walk out of Battleground as the WWE Champion. If there is a planned title change at Battleground, it will have to be Rollins that takes the title away from Dean Ambrose. Because if it's Roman Reigns, there's going to be a shit storm coming that WWE will never come back from. They're already not going to come back from this Roman Reigns redemption if they go through with this. If they give him the title, it's over. It's over. People are going to be canceling subscriptions. People are going to fucking completely alienate themselves from the product. They cannot do that. So Vince McMahon is still set on keeping Roman Reigns as a babyface that he wants. He believes he's going to be babyface. And Vince McMahon believes that Rollins is going to be a heel. He wants to keep him as a heel. I think the role's got to be reversed. And I gave you more than enough reason as to why I think it should happen. And that's just the way it's going to be. So it's going to be interesting to see at Battleground what's going to happen. Definitely going to be a newsworthy show, not because of the match that's happening. I think the suspension and Roman Reigns coming back from suspension and how he's going to be received is going to trump all that. It's great that the match is happening. I just don't think it should be happening at Battleground. I honestly think it should be Rollins versus Ambrose. And if you want Reigns, make the match again at SummerSlam. That's just my opinion with that. Eva Marie, done with the main roster. I wish she was done with the WWE forever. Never mind the fucking main roster. Eva Marie isn't going to be winning any popularity contests or most talented contests anytime soon. But her ability to get a reaction from the WWE Universe is one skill that she has that will be her saving grace. However, she hasn't been featured on WWE television or NXT programming since WrestleMania 32. So there is a lot of speculation about what's next for Miss Eva Marie. It was reported and revealed that Emma's injury caused WWE officials to figure out a new plan for Dana Brooke on the main roster. Although Eva Marie was a top choice for her partner, they ultimately went with current WWE champion, or women's champion, I should say, Charlotte, for obvious reasons. Now, it is being reported by ringtalk.com that Eva Marie is now waiting for something to do on the main roster. Waiting for something to do on the main roster. I can think of several things Eva Marie could do on the main roster. And wrestling is not one of them. Since WWE technically called up back or called her back up to the main roster for a match at WrestleMania 32, that doesn't mean she is not part of the main roster. It means that WWE wanted to put someone meaningless in a meaningless match. That's all that means to me. It doesn't mean she's on the main roster. The WWE draft and brand split are coming up. So there could be an opportunity for Eva Marie to get even more time on WWE television. The question is... Since the women's division is rumored to be featured on both Raw and SmackDown, how will Eva get a chance if things are exactly the same as they are now? Simple! You don't give her a chance! She sucks! Do I need to go into why she needs to be off my TV completely? 
Do I need to? No, I don't think so. Look at her Instagram. She does nothing but post pictures of herself in bikinis and photo shoots and making fucking organic chicken with vegetables and rice or whatever the fuck she's doing. Go on the Food Network with fucking Guy Fieri and cook me up something so I could get a glimpse at your nice red fucking hair. Please, among other things. I don't want to see you anywhere near a ring. A ring is the fucking last place you need to be. A beach, a kitchen, a photo shoot. Those are places where you need to be. In a ring? No. I could wrestle better than even Marie. The fucking goon sitting on my bed right now, who's imaginary, can wrestle better than Eva Marie. My grandma, at 88 years old, can wrestle better than Eva Marie. The fucking... The cardboard cutout you'll find at Walmart of John Cena can wrestle better than Eva Marie. Seriously. Eva Marie is fucking awful. There's no reason why she should be on the main roster. There, 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 should, there, there should be no reason why she's on the payroll. Why is she here? Why is she in fucking this news? Why is she on off the script? Jesus Christ, let me move the fuck on. Reason why WWE didn't announce Brock Lesnar's SummerSlam opponent. Obviously, if you have half a brain, you will realize what the reason is before I even read this story, but I'm going to read it anyway. It was revealed on Monday night that Brock Lesnar's opponent for SummerSlam has been chosen. I made a video about it. If you, you guys don't know who it is, I urge you to go check it out. And... He would be revealed on this week's edition of SmackDown. You can imagine the disappointment from many within the WWE Universe after last night's taping of SmackDown that didn't reveal Lesnar's opponent, or Tuesday's live SmackDown tapings, I should say, because it's Saturday, and I'm reading the fucking news story as if it was yesterday. So, Lesnar's opponent wasn't revealed on SmackDown. There's a specific reason for that, according to a report from WrestleZone.com, the fine people over at WrestleZone. The reason... WWE didn't reveal it on SmackDown during the tapings because it will most likely be edited into the show before tomorrow night. Not only that, but it's smart if you think about it. There have already been rumors for Lesnar to face Kevin Owens and Randy Orton at SummerSlam, but revealing it two days before SmackDown would stop a lot of fans from watching the show in the first place. Wow! I guarantee you the goon with one-fourth of a brain even figured that one out. There's also a lot of concern about revealing Lesnar's opponent before UFC 200 because the event is going to be a huge influence on Lesnar's WWE aura and his opponent should be prepared for whatever result comes out of that match. In many ways, Randy Orton is the perfect opponent for Brock Lesnar at SummerSlam because he'll be able to take the loss, make Brock look good in the ring, and be able to move on to the next feud. Uh, one thing that Mr. Justin Labar had stated, and I fully agree with this, if it is Randy Orton, and I'm assuming it is by now because people are saying it is confirmed because of a SmackDown airing that aired in Canada and it showed the prompt of Lesnar versus Orton, Randy Orton should be invited by UFC to UFC 200. WWE should allow one of their talents to sit amongst the many, the many celebrities that will be there at UFC 200 to get a glimpse of his opponent at SummerSlam. Not only is Brock Lesnar in the main event, but if they... Pan the camera on Randy Orton. Now, at least the UFC crowd, which most of them probably don't even know at this point that Lesnar's fighting Randy Orton, if they have that idea of Lesnar fighting Randy Orton at SummerSlam, holy shit, that's WWE superstar Randy Orton. A WWE future Hall of Famer Randy Orton. Former multi-time champion Randy Orton. If he's in the crowd and you got fucking uh, uh, Joe Rogan over there pretty much hyping Lesnar in the main event and then Throwing in a nice plug for SummerSlam, Randy Orton versus Lesnar, SummerSlam, WWE Network. I think a lot of people would be interested in that. That's a nice fucking generous plug for WWE. Nice rub for SummerSlam. I think that's the way to go, man. If I was WWE, I'd talk to Dana White. Get him on the phone. Bro, get Randy Orton a front row ticket, man. Let him be in the crowd. That's the smart way to do it. Great analysis by Justin Labar. And finally, guys, we're going to talk about Hideo Itami. To end this week's part two. So, you guys know Hideo Itami has been out for a year and a half. And it's a long fucking time coming back. Finally made his return at WWE NXT house shows. And what, so, what took so fucking long? Complications. Um, the Inquisitor actually wrote uh, an article on the injury. And before Itami went down to injury, there was rumored plans 
on the books for WWE Creative uh, to have him go to Japan last year with Brock Lesnar, expected to be part of that tour. And the company did a live special on the network called Beast in the East. It was there that WWE had rumored plans to have Hideo Itami win the NXT Championship from Kevin Owens, but as you all know, it ended up being Finn Balor. It all made sense. It was perfect. Perfect scenario. WWE's popular Japanese talent winning the NXT title in Japan? Come on, man. Couldn't write a fucking perfect story than that. You could not have asked for a better story. However, things did not go down that way, and WWE went with Finn Balor in that position. He also has Japanese ties, so obviously it still was a monumental moment, but Itami would have made a lot more sense. Interestingly, Hideo Itami was part of the number one contender triple threat before he got hurt. The day of the show, they did a storyline where he was attacked. Some people thought it was Kevin Owens. Meanwhile, others pointed to the two men in the match with Hideo. That being Tyler Breeze and Finn Balor himself. The problem is that WWE may not play up this story like we assumed they would. Balor versus Itami was on the books before it was found uh, that Itami needed more time to heal. So it does seem like they were planning for him to be the attacker. However, WWE is in a bit of a pickle as everyone in the story will be headed to the main roster very soon. According to DWN, due to the likes of Balor, Samoa Joe, and others heading to the main roster, WWE wants to make Hideo Itami one of its top stars of NXT once again. Of course, the depth of the NXT roster will go down, and the WWE happens to be signing talent left and right to hopefully help with the loss of so many stars. It was made clear at the WWE draft meetings that the company wants to focus on the new stars coming up from NXT to help fill the holes with the brand split happening. That means Hideo Itami could be NXT champion in 2016, but it also means he will be responsible for making sure the NXT brand stays as popular as it is now. With the likes of Finn Balor, Samoa Joe, and Bayley all headed up to the main roster before the fall comes to a close, Itami must help with NXT's star power. While WWE has gone out and signed people like Bobby Roode and Eric Young, they will only be a small help. So we very well could be seeing others signed before not too long to help with NXT. Expect to see some more wrestlers from the Cruiserweight Classic as well coming in as well as elsewhere in the independents. My, my idea for this Hideo Itami situation is this. Finn Balor versus Nakamura. Okay, that's happening on Wednesday. Most of us know the results. Okay, I'm not going to spoil them here because it's not fair to you guys. I know the results. You guys... Uh, some of you fucking bad seeds spoiled it, which I don't, you know, which I don't really care because it's expected. YouTube's cancer. Um, Hideo Itami, this fall, as soon as Nakamura wins the title from Samoa Joe, or it could go maybe one or two matches. I don't know. If it happens, it should happen in Brooklyn. That's just my mentality. You're not going to have a hotter crowd than that crowd in Brooklyn. Samoa Joe versus Nakamura. Nakamura is the face of the company. Okay, Nakamura is the new champion. What better way to feud Hideo Itami and Nakamura for the NXT title? Uh, I think that would be great, you know? And maybe if WWE wants to kind of hold off on it a little bit and delay it a little bit, and maybe we can go into WrestleMania season with Hideo Itami versus Nakamura, maybe that could headline take over at wherever they're, they're or take over Orlando, you know? I, I think Hideo Itami versus Nakamura is coming. I think both men will be unbelievable in a feud. I think the two collision, the, 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 the head-on collision between the two guys who are massive international stars outside of WWE before they even sign the dotted line, I think that's something that would generate a lot of buzz, not only in WWE, not only in NXT, but around the world. I think Hideo Itami versus Nakamura for the NXT title is on the horizon for NXT. If you heard it here... Uh, or if it does happen, you heard it here first. That's all I'm saying about that. That's my, that's my prediction. Shinsuke Nakamura versus Hideo Itami for the NXT Championship, whether it happens at the end of 2016, or they want to wait and delay it a little bit and have it happen during WrestleMania season, I think that is what's going to happen. Either way you're looking at it, Hideo Itami versus Nakamura will happen. And like I said, if it happens, you heard it here first. My prediction on Off The Script. Thank you guys so much for watching. That is part two. I will say this, okay? I don't want you guys to get all nervous when you don't see off the script in your sub boxes at 11 a.m. Sunday. Sunday at 11 a.m., there will be no off the script. 
Off the Script will be uploaded later on that evening when I get back from New Jersey, okay? Because I don't have enough news to cover three days worth of videos. I recorded yesterday's video and today's video in one shot, back to back, before I left for Jersey, okay? I didn't have enough news to do a part three, otherwise I would have, and I would have gave you guys a massive part four on Monday. And I would have recorded that on Sunday when I got back. But as of now, there is no news. There's not a lot of news going into Sunday, so I will save it, and hopefully something breaks for Sunday night. There will be no off the script on Sunday morning. I will replace it with something else. I might upload a Call of Duty video in its place, whatever the case may be. I got several videos unlisted right now on my channel, so you'll, you will get something at 11 o'clock. It's just not going to be off the script. So don't worry. Don't worry. Off the script will be back Sunday night with a video. And that will be uploaded in unison with the iTunes podcast. I will have both up at the same time, and I will get you guys all the off the script you want. So thank you for all the support. Thank you for understanding. I will be back on Sunday night. Look forward to off the script on Sunday night. This is part two of episode 125. I'm JD. If you enjoyed the video, hit that thumbs up. Let me know what you guys are thinking about all the top stories in part two. Patreon, Twitter, YouTube, WrestleCrate, Barbershop Window. You guys got it all, man. If you missed any of my videos previously this week, everything you need is down where your mother was, down below. I'll see you guys later. Enjoy the weekend. Enjoy UFC. And I'll see you guys on Twitter for UFC 200 tonight, man. Take it easy. Enjoy the fight. Talk to you later.